The other was the actor Marlon Brando. They were um, roommates on the Low East Side in the 40s, and they remained friends. They were lifelong friends. In 1948, he was awarded a, a, a fellowship. In November, he sails for Europe, where he will live the rest of his life, even though he, at times, lived in New York and in Turkey. In 1958, he returns. His brother David was, um, was a gospel singer. And in the book above my head, in the book above my head, he bases that on his brother's experience in the South, David. And the reason he went to the South was because of David telling him of his experiences. Um, he returns to the South several times. This is the third trip. He becomes involved in SNCC, CORE, and the Black Panthers. He becomes very close to the young activist Jerome Smith. He's also close to Megger Evans. He was there a couple of weeks before his death. And Bobby Seale. In 1971, Baldwin suffers his first heart attack. After being released from the hospital, he returns to France and decides to buy a villa in southern France at St. Paul. That was the idea of his friend Simone Singeret, who lived there with her husband. Nina Simone later moved, bought a villa there, and um, he made the comment, She's crazy, and now she's trying to drive me crazy. <laughs> I can't take it. Um, he hosts fundraisers and parties and participates in rallies, speaking out on prison reform. He works for the release of the Harlem Six, Angela Davis, Bobby Seale, and Huey Newton. When he returns to France, he becomes friends with Maya Angelou. Simone and Angelou hated each other. <laughs> um, he, um, she's often said she's a dancer who can't dance, an actress who can't act. And all she wrote was one damn book <laughs> that everyone is raving about. <laughs> um, Maya Angelou got her revenge in a newspaper article. <laughs> Uh, after one of Simone's breakdowns. <clears throat> the spring of 1987, he was diagnosed with cancer. He returns to St. Paul and is there taken care of by his brother, a former dancer, uh, Bernard Hassel, and um, his lover from the 1950s, um, Lucianne, Haperberger, who took him to Switzerland, where he wrote his first novel. He passes on December 7, 1987, and the funeral is held at St. John the Divine in New York on December the 8th. Uh, I attended the funeral. I took about 12 of my students. His sister Ruthie got us tickets. And one of the most powerful speeches there was done by Amir Barak. If you ever, well, all of you are sure, are uh, computer literate or whatever they call it, and um, you should definitely read that speech of Baldwin. Uh, I know I'm supposed to go into um, his um, works, but we need to have a Q&A. We've done, this is our third project on Baldwin. And we have never had a Q&A because we get involved. So tonight we'd like to have a Q&A. Reggie, would you come up? And um, any questions, you can direct it at the three of them. Mm -hmm. Not me. Mm -hmm. OK, you can direct it at the three of them. And afterwards, I want Stephen to read his. This may be the most interesting part. But... OK, before the Q&A, you can read your answers. A 
poet, a real poet, speaks the truth. Bessie Smith, Charlie Parker, Nina Simone, Max Roach, Miles Davis, Billie Holiday, Mahalia Jackson are all poets. I'm not talking about literature at all. I'm talking about the recreation of our experience. They refine it and give it back to you. And it gets you from one place to another. That's what their music does, make it possible for you to bear it. And the one other poem, one other quote by Baldwin on this is, I played Bessie Smith, Fats Waller, and James P. Johnson every day. And I began to recreate the life I had first known as a child. And I was no longer ashamed of that life. I found the cadence, the beat, the tones. Finally, after 10 years, I finished the novel. The music brought me home. Thank you. So a couple of quotes dealing with sexuality, which I like. One is American males, American males are the only people I've ever encountered in the world who are willing to go on the needle before they go to bed with each other. And the moment, and the moment I really like is the American, idea, the American idea of sexuality appears to be rooted in the American idea of masculinity. But no other country has ever made so successful and glamorous a romance out of genocide and slavery. Therefore, perhaps, perhaps the word I'm searching for is not an idea, but ideal. And this I like. The American ideal, then, of sexuality appears to be rooted in the American ideal of masculinity. This ideal has created cowboys and Indians, good guys and bad guys, punks and studs, tough guys and softies, butch and faggot, black and white. It is an ideal so paralytically infantile that it is virtually forbidden as an unpatriotic act that the American boy evolve into the complexity of manhood. Thank you. Uh, once again, we're not doing the Q&A. <laughs> For time, what we'll do is have another program this day for the Q&A. We'll come to the raffle of the